Hello YouTube, my name is Billy and welcome back to my channel. Tonight we're going to make uh, sweet potato fries and we're also going to make a very special chicken dish. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I've gone ahead and got my oven to 400 degrees and then we're for the sweet potato fries I'm gonna take one sweet potato and I'm gonna cut the ends off just so I get a pretty uniform shape. And then I'm just gonna cut the rest of the sweet potato in half or nearly as half. And then I'm just gonna slice that up into just little fry size pieces. Okay. Now some of these will be a little bit larger. So you just cut those again, just until you get a nice little French fry shape. That one's good. Okay, and then basically we're just going to take those and lay those out on a baking sheet. I'm going to bake these. I'm not going to fry these. I'm going to end up frying my chicken tonight, so try to do a little better with the sweet potatoes. Okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil and just kind of lightly drizzle those. Not a lot. Okay. And then to season, I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, we're gonna pop those into a 400 degree oven just until they're tender. Okay, now for the chicken. I have a tripod now, so I'm just trying to figure it all out. It's quite small, but it seems so far to do the quick, the trick quite well. Okay, now I'm just gonna take one chicken breast. It's just me tonight, so, and I don't wanna go out, so I wanna cook. Okay, we're gonna take some horseradish. And just baste that pretty well all over. Okay, now that we have our chicken breast completely coated in the horseradish, I'm going to take about a cup of mushrooms or a good handful and one clove of, of garlic. And we're gonna come right over here. Just 
into our little food processor. And we're gonna take a good handful. And these mushrooms are just, um, it's a blend. It's uh, button mushrooms. baby portabella and shiitake. All right, put the mushrooms and the clove of garlic in there and just kind of pull it out. Okay, once that's completely worked into a little paste, we're gonna go over here. To our meat about medium size nonstick skillet. And we're gonna turn that to medium heat. And then we're just gonna dump those in there. And we're just gonna cook those dry in a dry non skit non stick skillet until uh, you just get enough of the moisture out of them. You've seen me use this mixture quite frequently this week, and um, that's basically because I we are getting ready to go out of town for the holidays, and instead of going out and buying new things to make all new dishes, I'm trying to use up what we have so we don't have, you know, a lot of food that goes bad before uh, we leave. I'm hoping this little tripod works out. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be a little gimmicky at first, but so far, well, maybe it is a little gimmicky. We'll, we'll see. And we're just going to get a spoon or something and we're just going to toss that around and just you're not really going to cook it that long you're just going to cook it until you get quite a bit of the moisture out of the mushrooms I'm not going to season this with any salt or anything actually uh, just because um, the horseradish has a lot of salt and it also has a lot of other good flavors in it that I want. Okay, while we're getting that done, um, I've got another skillet here with some canola oil. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that to medium heat and I'm just gonna let that get hot because the rest of this is gonna go pretty quick. Try 
trying to get this guy to stand up a little bit more so you can see into the pan. You can see there's quite a, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's quite a bit of moisture in there. Now, if I was baking the, the chicken, you, you could, you wouldn't have to worry about so much getting so much of the moisture out because it would actually help keep the meat really tender, but I'm frying that and I do not want a bunch of moisture going into a pan of hot grease. That would definitely not <laughs> uh, do so well. That would be a lot of popping and just a really unsafe idea. Water and hot oil do not, <laughs> they're not friends. They react quite violently, violently if you're not careful. I'm gonna bump the heat up just a little bit to speed that up. Okay. And I'm gonna leave, leave that. I'm gonna take that up now. I don't want it too dry because I, I want to be able to work with it. Okay, now that we're back over here with the chicken, and hopefully my little friend here will cooperate. So far, we're doing pretty good. Okay, we are going to take our mushroom mixture Yeah, we're just gonna care ooh carefully kind of plop that down and I'm gonna use another spoon because that's quite high and you're just gonna rub that all over I really don't like being home alone. <laughs> I'm quite codependent. However, it's one of the few times I get to eat or experiment with food that I know my wonderful little picky eaters would never allow me to cook or not come fully. I, I'm used to having to always modify or change something or make several versions of the same thing. I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna rinse my fingers. Now I have a couple of slices of bacon. And we're just gonna wrap that up. Wrap the chicken in bacon. I don't think you can go wrong with the bacon. <laughs> bacon is good. It doesn't have to be tight. You just want it on there snugly enough just to 
hold everything on. Okay. Now that that's good. That's about all we need. Okay. I'm going to get another little ball. One egg and a splash of milk. So we're just going to make up a little egg wash. Take your egg, crack it one good firm time down on the side of the bowl, peel it apart, and drop in your stuff. When you do all that little tapping, that's how, that's how you end up with eggshells in your food. Take a fork and just whisk that up. Okay, now right here, I don't know if you can see this, but on the other side of this skillet, there, now you can see it. Okay, this is just a uh, plate of just panko breadcrumbs, plain panko. You could do other breadcrumbs as well, but I don't, I want, I really want the flavor of the horseradish, so. All right, we're gonna dunk that right in. Just roll that around. Okay, and then we're going to press that really firmly down into those panko crumbs. This is actually gonna be a lot of food for one person. You could easily feed two. I love to eat good food. But I also like to do some lighter things, and you will see that coming up after the holidays. Got to get rid, rid of some of this holiday pudge. Eating healthy does not always mean you're no flavor or cooking healthy is really good. I like to cook, when I cook healthy, I like a lot of fish and vegetables. I am not a picky eater at all. So changing my diet throughout the year is not hard for me because I will literally eat anything. I am not a picky eater and food is good. Okay, we've got our skillet with the canola oil or you could use peanut oil or vegetable oil or any other oil you want i'm trying to get gizmo to cooperate i think that's going to be his name he's a little quirky but it could just be the fact that He's new, and I am user erroring him, <laughs> which is probably the case. I think we're gonna go with that. We are going to take the chicken breast that's completely coated, and we're just gonna dump that right in, and we're gonna fry that.
All right, I'm gonna let that fry until it is completely golden brown on both sides. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna clean up and set the table. Okay, I have worked out my little gizmo here and basically the problem I was having was not the phone or the stand, it was my little Mophie uh, extended battery pack that goes on the phone caused it to be too heavy. So lesson learned there. Okay, so now we've got our chicken done and about the same time the chicken is done, the sweet potato fries are also done. So I've already plated that. Let you see that. And that's beautiful.